Good evening. Thank you for joining us with Candid Coffee. My name is Christine, and today we're here with R.P. Krikorian. Thank you for inviting me to your home. I'm very happy to be here, and congratulations on all your success this year. Thank 2018, you. going into 2019, was super busy for you. Yes, thank you. I'm so happy to be here with you. I'm glad you guys are here. Thank you so much. Um, my first question to you is, um, as a child, when you were drawing, illustrating, um, what what were you thinking that would take you? Like, if someone were to ask you, oh, RP, what do you want to be when you grow up? You're such a talented artist. What would you like to do with that talent? Honestly, I did not start drawing until high school. Okay. Yeah, I was uh, an athlete. I was into gymnastics, and then a uh, gymnastics injury got me to stop, and it was just right around that time that we had a great art teacher. I went to Mesrobian Armenian School in Montebello, mm -hmm. and we had a great art teacher that saw something in me, and I, I think I was in the ninth grade, mm -hmm. and uh, told me about Art Center's high school program. Okay. And I thought, there's no way I can go to Art Center, but it was the public program. Mm -hmm. I went, and for four years I was there. Before, all through high school? All through high school. I went there, that's where I built my portfolio. But all I wanted to do was Armenian children's books. My, that was it. My hero was Mary Inglebright. She still is. Mary, if you're watching this, I love you. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to draw pictures like she did. And the funny part is after, you know, I've, I've had a small career at this point. Children's books is the only thing I have not done. <laughs> that's the, the irony. funny part. The yeah. irony of it all. But yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Oh. I adore your little characters, especially the girls. Um, they each have a special look about them, and their names, Sevan, Nazeli, Nare, Ani, uh, they're very That's traditional good. Armenian <laughs> you know? names. Yes, I did my homework. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're beautiful traditional Armenian names. When you're sketching them, um, do you think of your daughters? Who, who comes to mind when you're making each character? It's a, my process happens in a few different ways. Sometimes um, I'm just looking at Pinterest or I'm looking at Instagram mm -hmm. and I see a face that talks to me and I start to sketch that out. A muse. Yeah, mm -hmm. but honestly, a lot of the times it's just me sitting with my sketchbook, not looking at anything. And I basically just start with the shape of a face. And I, uh, as soon as I put down the eyes, the nose and the mouth, it starts to guide me. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not until really at the end that I think about the details of the costuming. Mm -hmm. So I know pretty much the different shapes of like what the Armenian hats look like or what the head pieces look like. So I allow room for all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, but as far as the faces go, a lot of the times people comment that my girls look like my daughters. Mm -hmm or um, the boys look like my husband, you know? <laughs> but those are the faces I'm staring at all day long. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's really all just comes from my imagination. Mostly all of them come from my imagination. Mm -hmm. There are a few characters that I've drawn that have been based on specific people. And, um, but I think like Alin, Arev, and uh, Nazeli and Vartuhi. Mm -hmm. Other than that, all the other ones are imagination. imagination. Yeah. Okay. And I have Arev here, right? That's Lori. Oh, this, this is, is Arev. Oh, that one's Arev, this right? Is Arev. This is Lori. And it's they're they're so sweet. I had actually gotten a Excuse me. I had gotten a um, a little sketchbook with Lori's picture on it. Um, and oh, I the journal. The, the journal, yeah. yes. And I gifted it to my uh, brother and sister-in-law because they Aww. have a little one-year-old named Lori and it's such a nice. sweet little thing for them to have. And all of your gifts are, are so sentimental. Um, it, they could you. be made into little uh, tarosned for weddings and things like that, great gifts. Thank you. And that's, that's why I think people love them so much is because they probably remind them of someone they, yeah. they love. Yeah, the nicest, um, letters that I get. I get a lot of emails from different people all, or, all around the world. And um, one of the nicest ones are in the remote parts of the world that you wouldn't think there's Armenians there. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Armenians in China or... Oh, wow. Yeah, in uh, Amsterdam. I, I mean, I know that there was Armenians in Amsterdam, but I didn't realize how many Armenians are in Amsterdam. Um, London. Mm -hmm. So people writing to me and saying, you're giving me a piece of my home. 
Aww. And that is the sweetest messages that I love to get. That they're connecting to it. It's reminding them of, of something somebody. that's so dear to yeah, them. And absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's so sweet. I love that. I know. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> that's so nice. You mentioned that you get a lot of fan mail and how dear that is to you and you've had so much success either through word of mouth or social media, um, your website and it's just um, gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and you've stayed so humble because I, with, before I even came here to do this interview with you, you invited me to your home last year with my mom, we picked out things together yeah. and you're so welcoming and you're so um, down to earth, uh, does it still seem really surreal to you? All of this fame? Yeah, <laughs> it, it is. It's very surreal. Like um, going to the Armenian market, you mm -hmm. know, it, like people getting stop, stop people stop oh. me. <laughs> they take pictures, oh, you know, and so uh, the cashiers are always asking, you mind, Cherav? We saw, you know, this and this and this. Mm -hmm. um, in Prague, we were in Prague and I got stopped by someone oh, in wow. Armenia. I mean, it's it's like a tiny little bit, but yeah. it is surreal. It, yes. It's very surreal. And um, I'm just grateful. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how else to explain it, that I get to draw in my little studio upstairs and share it with the world. Mm -hmm. And actually people like it and they respond and they relate to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm really only drawing things that make me happy. I mean, this is my culture and my heritage. That's what brings me joy. And it, I'm able to um, translate into a, a picture mm -hmm. and people get Feelings. to see that picture yes. and they it, it evokes it emotion. Yeah, it resonates. It, it's amazing mm -hmm. to me, but um, I'm just super, super grateful. And like when people comment on social media, I've said this before too, on Instagram and Facebook, I answer every single comment as much as I can. Sometimes it's a few days later, sometimes it's a That's few okay. weeks later. Yeah, you're busy. <laughs> like the Met posts I didn't get back to, I think it took like a month to get through all of them. Sometimes there's thousands of comments, mm -hmm. but I, um, I, I always say that if they took the time to comment, then I take the time to read it and I, every single one just makes me happy. Absolutely. Puts a smile on my face and it really fuels my fire. Mm -hmm. uh, keeps you honestly, going. Honestly, it keeps me going, you. it keeps me inspired, mm -hmm. it gives me a mission. And it, it just kind of reconfirms that this is something that is making people happy. And if I can continue to do that and provide it, then I will continue to do it and provide it. Absolutely. Yeah. Anytime I've either uh, hosted something at my parents' house that we had your uh, Sini or um, they saw the cups at my house or they saw a post that I did, uh, my guests or my friends would always say, oh, I know RP, oh, I love her stuff. And it's uh. so cute. And people recognize you and people, yes, only Armenians because that's your that's your niche yeah. and those are that's your audience. But Armenians love to um, share and talk about other Armenians who are doing something profound. And it's not just pictures, you are doing something very profound. Thank and you. That leads me to, you know, um, the Metropolitan Museum. Yeah. That was, I was floored when I heard about it. My, me too. Yeah. <laughs> how, how did that come about? Oh my God, it was amazing. So, um, I am working on an animation, and I'm telling you this, it's kind of, a, uh, it ties all together. So I'm uh, working on an animation with a, f a friend of mine, and um, I needed to do research. So I went to our, my daughter's school teacher, he's an Armenian historian, and he was showing me different books about Armenian things. And he says to me, you need to go to the Ararad Museum mm -hmm. in, you know, the Eskedjan Museum at Ararad Home in, in Mission Hills. So we set up an appointment with the curator there, Maggie. I went and I met her, loved her so much. We spent four hours together. It was supposed to be a one hour meeting. It turned into four hours. At the end of it, she says, this was October 2017. She says, do you know that there's going to be an exhibit, an Armenia exhibit at, at the Metropolitan Museum mm -hmm. next year? Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? what? I couldn't believe yeah. that that was happening. And she said, actually, the curator, Dr. Helen Evans, 
is going to be coming out in a couple of weeks to do a lecture here about the exhibit. She said you should mm -hmm. come and watch. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. This is the one with the Hotchkot, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So two years, uh, I'm sorry, two weeks later, I went to the Eskijan Museum and I walk in and Dr. Evans was there and she's like a celebrity for me. And she turns around, she's like, oh, RP. And I'm like, <laughs> who talking is to me? she talking to? <laughs> and um, turns out she was staying with Maggie. Maggie mm -hmm. hosts all her guests, whoever comes out to lecture. She's mm -hmm. an amazing woman too. And they went on my website. Mm -hmm. So um, Dr. Evans turns around and says, do you know that we're going to need products for the show coming up? Mm -hmm. And I'm at this point, I'm like, oh. <laughs> What is going on right mm -hmm. here? Mm -hmm. And she says, I can't do anything about it. All I can do is tell them your name. Mm -hmm. And uh, more than that, it's just, it's for you to handle. Like you have to go after it. There's nothing I can do. Yeah. I said, okay. You mm -hmm. know, so uh, I went to the car. I had some merchandise in the car. I had a travel mug and a gift bag. I brought it out to her. I gave it to her as a thank you. Mm -hmm. And she said, I'm going to take this to the merchandising department. But again, I can't promise you anything. Right. I said, right. okay, great. So. She leaves, she emails me a week later that I dropped off the merchandise, mm -hmm. and then I respond with, who do I follow up with? Mm -hmm. No response. Okay. So between October and May, I was trying to find a name to follow up with. Oh, wow. Because Dr. Evans was traveling at this point, um, mm -hmm. and when you call the Metropolitan, they don't just tell you, yeah, this is the person who buys. Finally, in May, mm -hmm. uh, so between October and May, I just made it my mission. On a weekly basis, I called and emailed the Met. And mm -hmm. I was just hoping and praying somebody feels for me and says, <laughs> you know what, this is the person, but nobody, <laughs> nobody did. Mm -hmm. And then finally in May, Dr. Evans picked up the phone. Because mm -hmm. I, I was trying her to, but she, like I said, she was traveling everywhere talking right. about the exhibit. And I said, Dr. Evans, please, can you just tell me who do I talk to, blah, blah, blah. And she said, oh, yeah, there's a new lady that came in, and this is her name. And uh, I, she said, I don't even know her, but, you know, reach out to her. I said, great. I hang up, called back, she picks up. And at this point, I'm like, oh, my God, okay. I just wanted to hear the no. Like, right. you know, at this point, like, it can become like a, a game almost. So I gave her my spiel, you know, I'm calling for the Armenia exhibit, blah, blah, blah. She says, oh, we're all set for the Armenia exhibit. We don't need any new merchandise. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, OK, I can hang up or I can just go a step further. <laughs> and I said, you know, since we're on the phone together, can you please just get on my website? Just like this, please, can you just get on my website? Take a look at what I have. Mm -hmm. And maybe there is room for it. Right. So she goes, OK. Gets while, on the, on the while I'm on the phone. Right. Gets on the website and she goes, oh, my God. Just like that. She mm -hmm. goes, you're the answer we've been looking for. Wow. And I'm like, <laughs> really? <laughs> Since October, I've yeah, been yeah. calling and emailing. Persistence. Persistence. Yeah. And I'm like, OK, now what? Yeah. And she goes, <laughs> the Montoya. Yeah, chat. yeah. <laughs> she goes, well, I'll start co to connect you. And she connected yeah. me with, um, Within hours, I was on this big group email with the merchandising department and they, da, 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 they yeah. made me a vendor. And at this point, they said, um, I said, well, they, they sent me a list of 20 items mm -hmm. that they wanted to purchase. And, the, and all they wrote was a few of each. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm thinking two or three pieces of each, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you know, what do you think when you hear a few? So, and I respond with, okay, what's a few? You know, is there a PO, is there an invoice, oh, whatever, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so, um, I'm thinking it's a few up to yeah. like July. Mm -hmm. And at this point, my father passed away. Yeah. The week later, I get an email of the order. And it was actually a thousand piece order. And I'm all by myself. Mm -hmm. And I don't stock quantities that much. You know, so it was total panic mode. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, all these things come to mind of, you know, I'm, I was just, if you bought a t-shirt, put it in the bag and I sent it to you. Or, you know, if you bought a journal, there's no packaging. I didn't have labels. I didn't have anything on them. And I'm thinking, okay, this is going to the Met. Mm -hmm. I, I need to think about packaging. So I spent right. two weeks creating packaging. Mm -hmm. I just designed them all myself ordered bags, ordered uh, stickers, ordered baseball cards, 
to go in with the bracelets, all these things so that it looks nice and professional. Mm -hmm. And hired some help, um, enlisted the family, a lot of, you know, cousins <laughs> and aunts and uncles. Yeah. My brother-in-law was making bracelets. Like the whole family was just laid out, putting these things together and uh, we shipped it. Wow. Yeah, so we get there, September 21 was the opening day. We got there a couple days before. Meanwhile, I had um, asked them to send me a picture of the setup mm -hmm. so that I can you know, be ready for Instagram and Facebook. I'm all thinking all these things. And they don't set up until the day before because wow. that's when the exhibit is opening, right? So I didn't have any correspondence back. I knew from FedEx they received it. Yeah. So the day of we wake up and I looked at my husband and I said, what if they never got it? Got what it. if it's not there? What if this is all like a dream? Like, I swear, I had no idea mm -hmm. what was going to happen. So our best friends, Hirach and Araz had flown out too. They wanted to be there with us mm -hmm. and they happened to be at the museum before us. Okay. So they got there like an hour before us. So Aras called and she's like, oh, we're waiting for you. I said, Aras, do me a favor. Just go and see. Is this a dream? Like, is my stuff really in the yeah. med? Like, go. So she's like, oh, yeah, I'll be done. I'll call you right back. And she runs inside <laughs> and she comes back. She goes, it's here. It's all here. <laughs> so we, we went with the family and like, you know, again, I'm thinking, do what I go dream. Instagram live? Yeah. Do I do that? And my husband's like, can you just enjoy, enjoy the, the moment. moment? You know, I, I walked in and it was just the most amazing moment of my life. Mm -hmm. It was just everything came full circle. It was like my whole life flashed in front of my eyes. It was like, am I in a dream? It, it's what's next. What does this mean for everybody? What does this mean for Armenians? Mm -hmm. What is it? Like all these things are just kind of just coming to me, mm -hmm. and I I'd lost it. Mm -hmm. I just was I was bawling in yes. that store. Yeah, yeah. And um, oh. and so. That was Friday. Um, I was there until Monday. Actually, I was there until Tuesday, but Monday night was the special reception. And I get an email on Monday. We're almost sold out. We've never seen anything like this. When can you restock? Okay, let's try hire a Gnatsal and then they're yeah. like getting everything they can. <laughs> and I'm still at in New York. Yeah, yeah. And she said it was one of the best selling special exhibits they've ever had. Fantastic. And um, so <laughs> I'm from New York, I was supposed to be like shopping and stuff on Monday. I was on the phone, I sat in front of Macy's and uh, called all my vendors. You guys have to make this happen for me because a lot of my stuff is print on demand too. Right. You know, it's wholesale print on demand. Like my mug company I called there in San Francisco. I'm like, I, I need like 500 mugs. And mm -hmm. he's like, oh my God, when do you need it by? Yesterday. And then like, yeah, <laughs> then that has to come yeah. and then we have to put them in the boxes and put the stickers. It was just like Chaos. this whirlwind and it went on for three months like that. Right. It was. September every, to January. Every week, yeah. every two weeks, we need more, we need more, we need more. Yeah. And it, it's been amazing. It, it's been one of the most amazing things that's happened in my career. I'm going to quote them uh, because I want to say it exactly. Uh, this is from the reviews of your exhibit. <laughs> Armenia has earned its exclamation point. Oh. And I love that. It's eye-opening, and these are all reviews that they had given because of your Met exhibit. And it just goes on and on to, t to say uh, what, uh, how incredible it was, and how loved, uh, uh, how your fans loved it, and came and purchased it and supported you in that sense. Yeah. So, um, to circle back to your dad, I heard uh, you mentioned that he was saying to you throughout your life, um, be, yeah. be of service to your people yeah. and not just the Met, the Met is huge. This, whatever you did, even if you didn't do the Met and you just did from your home, uh, sending out these uh, these things to your to your customers and your fans. Edi Shatmet Okutayev, I'm sure he's extremely proud of you. When I was graduating high school, I was an overachiever. So I was, you know, ASB president, class salutatorian. I, you know, played volleyball, did all this stuff. So he had very high hopes for me. Mm -hmm. And senior year comes along, and he sits me down. He was a very formal man, and he said, you know, what what are you going to do with college? Like, mm -hmm. what's your plans? 
and I said I'm going to art school. It, I, I wasn't even in yet, but you know, that's what I was going to do. And she said, Chentesin chess! He goes, <laughs> um, I'll say it in Armenian and then I'll, I'll translate. Nagarbi di gaches bada tanes. Like, mm -hmm. how are you going to, yeah, artist. what are you going to do? Yeah. Make pictures and hang them on the wall? Mm -hmm. And I said, no. I said, like, I, I wanted to be a commercial artist. You know, he didn't know what that was. He goes, gan pejish, gan pastapan. That's it. He goes, one or the other, lawyer or doctor. That's it. And oh, I said, no, I said, I want to be an artist. an artist. And he goes, he goes, I'm not paying for it, for art school. Wow. So my 18th <laughs> birthday, August 3rd, um, 1989, I got the acceptance letter from Art Center. Mm -hmm. And at that point, Art Center was the fourth hardest university to get into in the country. And I was afraid to tell my dad I got in. Mm -hmm. So I tell him, and again, he just shakes his head. I said, can you just come see the gallery? They have a really nice student gallery. See what I can do with it. Mm -hmm. So I took him and I showed him, you know, all the commercial illustration art, the displays that they had over there. And he was like, okay, fine, whatever. He goes, I'll, I'll help you get a loan, but like, that's it. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. So I got scholarships, grants, loans, a whole bit went through arts. And I mean, long story short, um, a few years back, 2016, or 17, I can't, 2016, 2015, I think it was. This painting won um, an art competition. Paul Krikorian, who's a city councilman, he had an art competition about the genocide. Mm -hmm. And so this uh, was one of the winners of that. And at the same time, Swain's in Glendale um, started selling my products. And that was another story. I basically walked in and I'm like, hey, your demographics is 65% Armenian. Armenian. Don't you want to <laughs> you know, have Armenian products? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. they believed in me and they believed in the power of the Armenian. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a whole other show. Anyway. Um, so all these people are calling my dad at this point, right? It was in the paper about the competition and mm -hmm. then the people had seen things in Swain's and you know, the competition was on Shant TV and you know, <laughs> so he's like on cloud nine, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I go to visit and uh, he says, oh, chicos, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. And I said, can I ask you something? I said, of course, this is all happening in Armenian. Mm -hmm. I said, um, when I was a senior in high school, you told me either doctor or, or lawyer. lawyer to uh, ask it to be a benefit to your people. I said, do you think I'm being a benefit to my people now? And he just stopped. He sat like this. And at this point, he was in his mid 80s, you know, and he said, he goes, I had no idea. He goes, how was I going to know you're going to make drawings, you're going to pull them, put them on pillows, then the people are going to have them in their home. Like, he goes, I had no idea that this could have happened. Yeah. He goes, I gave you the best advice I could to the best of my knowledge at the time I gave it. Mm -hmm. And he goes, yeah, I'm very proud of you. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. I mean, it was a, a really touching moment too as a parent that we really don't know what our kids are capable of. Mm -hmm. And we're basing our parenting, our advice, based on what we know and our right. experience. Right. But there's, the world is different now. Yeah. so many more um, opportunities and possibilities so Absolutely. it was a really nice moment oh that's wonderful yeah that's so sweet let's talk about uh last year this time yeah i remember um it it just happened the year passed by so fast. Um, everything was going crazy on social media. Everybody was posting about the revolution. Yeah. We were like on the edge of our seat. What's going to happen, uh, you know, with Pashinyan, with um, um, everyone being up in arms. And it was a little scary because, you know, it's it's a you're going against the grain. Yeah. And you're you're protesting, even though we did it with smiles and, and yeah. laughter and dancing and horovats on the street and it I was love it. it was so wonderful to watch. My whole family was just glued to the to the screen. Um, tell me about what you were feeling um, from from your end. Well, I, I I think that every Armenian is born an activist. Mm -hmm. We just are, you know, especially in the century that we're in. And watching that, I just wanted to be a part of it. I, I just wanted to fly out there and walk with him and mm -hmm. be in that hara barag, I mean, that sirdesker targo I, you know, I couldn't be there. Yeah. But it, I felt like that's the true Armenian. That's the true Armenian spirit. Mm -hmm. When people were speaking up for what they believed in and all these voices came together to make a louder voice be heard. Yes. 
and um, I'm just so proud of what happened, happy for what happened. And when I met Mrs. Anya Anna Hagopian this past week, I understand how it happened. Mm -hmm. She's just, the way they think, the Pashinyans think, and um, it's what should have been for a long time. And right. it's finally time and hopefully that, you know, their work will continue like this. But it was amazing. Absolutely. I 100% agree with you. Um, you're so um, privileged to have met her. Um, oh, yeah. I think the two of them are an incredible pair. Um, and uh, my, speaking for my family, my dad and I were watching it and just in awe and just were like, oh my God, I hope nothing happens to him. Yeah. I hope he's safe. I hope that they'll give him a chance to really work on, you know, decades and decades of, of, of corruption and yeah. oppression and things like oh, that. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot on his plate, but we were all so hopeful. And one of the questions I remember a lot of people were asking is why now? Why not five years ago? Why not 10 years ago? And the answer was um, two parts. One of them being the youth, yeah. uh, like 18 to about 30, mm -hmm. and, um, and how they were so courageous. And the other one was also um, uh, the answer that Anna gave Araxia Karapetian. When the she women. Did, the women, exactly. Yeah. And she said if it wasn't for the women yeah. and their bravery and their and their pride and taking their children even in the Sailaknej yeah. on the streets, um, it, was just, it was just incredible to watch from every uh, age, from the older people who were barely standing on their feet and to the little kids that put little cars on the on the road so as a cute. barrier. I mean, the pictures were incredible to, to look at, yeah. and um, I'm so happy that uh, it's been a year. It's very short. It's a very short time, but we can reflect already and see how we are going to move forward, especially with Anna coming to Boston to see yeah. you. Then she came to LA, and she's doing so many great things. Yeah. Um, Multiple states, actually. Yes. She went to she went to Washington D.C. as well. I mm -hmm. think she was going to Nashville, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Multiple cities. It's a 17-day visit mm -hmm. in the United States. Wow. Yeah, and it's amazing because I, I was having this thought um, this whole past week when we were going to meet her and afterwards too that it's funny that every time we had to mention her, we had to say the spouse of the prime minister of, you know, because I feel like, and again, I don't know if. To the best of my knowledge, she's the first woman in leadership representing Armenians mm -hmm. that has actually stood up and is doing her own thing. Right. You know, we've never had a first lady that took charge mm -hmm. and, you know, chaired different foundations and exactly. did this for the benefit of the people. She's all about the people. Absolutely. You know, and I think that also encouraged the women to bring out their kids because they saw her by his side. Mm -hmm. With know, four, four children. With her children, yeah. walking with her children. So she's been very influential in for all Armenians, mm -hmm. but um, especially the Armenian women. Yes. So... Um, it, I, and I was thinking, why don't we have a name for the wife of the prime minister? Right, right, <laughs> right. Like yeah. it's a, she's not the first lady technically, right. and a lot of people have referenced her as the first lady, but she's not. She's right. not the president's wife. But there should be a title mm -hmm. because up till now it wasn't important. Right, exactly. Right, and it's the first time she's made that role mm -hmm. important, mm -hmm. and she's um, taking on these causes, and she's actually doing the work, mm -hmm. like. I was thinking about that in Boston too, that she's a working mom. Mm -hmm. She's got four young kids. I mean, yeah, her, uh, the older ones are, I think, 18 and in their 20 or 22, something like that, Mariam is. But the younger ones, they're young. Mm -hmm. And to leave them, to come to the United States, mm -hmm. to meet all these people in a country where it's not her mother tongue, you mm -hmm. know? She's very strong and classy and held her head up high and just was so amazing to me. It was yeah. really, really great. It was great. I envy you. I, I, I love her so much and I got to know someone that I could say, wow, my, my country, Armenia, has a you know, strong, um, intelligent, classy woman who is a representative of our country aside from a president yeah. or a prime minister or yeah. whatever it is. Um, 
and she mentioned in her interview that I that I watched recently while she was in LA, um, she has an initiative for the the for Gharabagh, uh, I'm sorry for Azerbaijan. Yeah, Women for Peace. Yes. Yeah. Uh, to make sure that we keep the peace. Yes. And yeah. um, she was so um, emotional about you know the lives that were lost a few years ago during that short war that we well, had. Because her son is serving as well mm -hmm. right now. Wow. Yeah. And the other thing I meant, um, I noticed about her too, and again, I felt like this is a first for our leadership. Mm -hmm. She used the word love a lot. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's a woman's touch in leadership right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. You know, that we're doing this with love, we're doing this with peace, peace. we're embracing the people. Like she talks against domestic violence, you know, mm -hmm. stuff that has not been talked Talks about. about. Yeah. Because it hasn't been deemed important. And all of a sudden she's like, these things are important that Absolutely. we need to fix and that's why I think she has so much power with the women being behind mm -hmm. her too. Because finally, and I said this in my speech, she's the voice of the voiceless. Mm -hmm. And she's getting everybody to speak louder and it's been amazing. I can't wait to see what else she does, where else she Absolutely. goes. Yeah. yeah, She's very inspiring and she said she was so grateful that she's such an inspiration and to inspire an artist like you to paint a magnificent portrait of Thank her. Thank you. I listened to uh, your speech about every detail of that picture, yeah. the, the the grain, the the, um, the grapes, grapes um, her necklace, the, the the initials, everything. It was it was so heartfelt. Um, tell me the whole process of making that. Um, what were you feeling, and, and how did you just look at it and say, "Wow, it's done. It looks it looks perfect." Yeah, it was pretty nerve wracking to mm -hmm. when uh, Armine, actually one of the organizers of the event in Boston, reached mm -hmm. out to me and said, "We just have this wonderful idea, and mm -hmm. wouldn't it be great to present her with one of your drawings?" Oh wow! And no pressure. No pressure at all. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I'm not a photorealist portrait painter. Mm -hmm. That's not what I do. I do mm -hmm. caricatures, I do representations, mm -hmm. but I don't, you know, concentrate on making it look like it's a photograph. Mm -hmm. And a copy so, of a photograph, yeah. Yeah, a copy yeah. of a photograph. And usually when somebody is painting a portrait of someone, the person is sitting in front of them for you to paint. I mean, right. I was going off of pictures that I was just Googling of her, mm -hmm. you know? So initially I told her, I said, are you sure that you guys want to do this? Because again, I'm not a portrait painter. She said, no, no, we want it to be done in your style. And mm -hmm. so um, I spent, a, I said, of course I would do it. And then I spent a month thinking about it of what do I do? What do I do that best represents her? How do I, what is she wearing? I mean, what does her hair look like? Mm -hmm. And if you look at pictures of um, Mrs. Hagopian, whenever she's, on the streets, she's protesting, she's with the people, she's doing the real work. Her hair is curly, it's down. She's mm -hmm. not worried about being glammed up, made up. She's beautiful, she doesn't mm -hmm. need to do any of that. But that's the Anna I wanted to capture. Mm -hmm. The real one that, that puts up her sleeves and goes to work. Mm -hmm. And so that was one of the things that I said, okay, we're, we're going curly with the hair and then with the, um, even the, the dress being blue. Um, I didn't say this in my speech, but even that was the, it was peaceful. It was mm -hmm. peace. That, for me, color blue it represents peace. And then around her waist was the logo of City of Smile. Yes. So, and I made it look like it was coming out of the pomegranate. So you kind of have to really look twice to see, is it on her waist um, or is it in the pomegranate? Right. So again, it was giving birth to something that mm -hmm. she, she's doing an amazing job fundraising for um, kids that are suffering from cancer, cancer. in mm -hmm. Armenia. And they were saying this story at the Boston event that there was a mom that was you know, staying with her child at the cancer center for three weeks and did not have a change of clothes. So she was in the same clothes for three weeks because they didn't have a laundry facility. She didn't have extra clothes. It's like little things like this that you don't, you know, everybody's thinking about, okay, medication. Of course, that's so important. But at the same time, making the family comfortable yeah. during the process. So those are also the things that they're fundraising for. Right. So um, 
that that was that and then you know you can read the speech about all the different elements but mm -hmm. i wanted to really make sure too that i highlighted her journalism mm -hmm. background and if you look at the patterning in the back there are the feathers the quills that um, people used to write with mm -hmm. and so that i felt represented her writing background her journalistic mm -hmm. background and um, around her neck i felt it was really important that First and foremost, she's a mom, mm -hmm. you know, th that's her most valuable treasure. treasure yeah. And so um, I included the initials of her family around her neck and I was very happy with it. And I mean, I went back and forth, back and forth and showing my family, what do you think does look like her? Because again, mm -hmm. we're all going by, based on pictures. We've never seen yes. her, we've never met her. Um, and then it finally came to a point and I said, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, this is it. Mm -hmm. And um, until I got there, I had no idea how she's gonna react. Is she oh, gonna like it? Is no, she not course. gonna like it? So when I got on to say my speech, her um, assistant and secretary, uh, they were standing right in front of me. But Aunt Mrs. Hagopian was standing behind me. So she hadn't seen the picture. It was being projected on the walls, oh. but she, she was just right behind me. Her entourage could see it, but mm -hmm. she couldn't see it. And I was looking at their face like as I was looking up and they were doing like stuff like this and looking at her. And at one point I'm looking at the video and she's going like, like, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but because she didn't know what I'm really referencing. And then until you showed until it I her. turned it around yeah. and then I got that expression from her. And I'm like, yes, thank you, Lord Jesus. She likes it because yeah. <laughs> of, you know, the way she just she went like this and then she went like like this and then she went like this. Mm -hmm. And then um, we hugged yeah. and she just held me so tight and wouldn't let go and, yeah. and she just kept on repeating yeah. and I was telling her I said yeah. so like I, that's what I was telling her mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it was just for that one moment I honestly felt like it was woman to woman <laughs> Working mm -hmm. mom to working mom, like yeah. I hear you, girl. <laughs> you know, and you deserve this. You know, and I, because she was tired, she was fatigued, she was going from state to state, state yeah. coast to coast. Mm -hmm. You know, within hours, she had multiple um, events that she was going to, yeah. and I felt like she really liked this part. You Absolutely. know, that it was for her and yeah. something she In can honor. take home. Yeah. yeah. It was it was amazing. I saw the pictures and you didn't even have to really watch the video because the pictures in and of, of itself of the reveal of the painting when she looked at it and she went like this and yeah. you could just, you know, pictures that worth a thousand words. You could see her her um, heartfelt reaction and she loved it so much. You can tell. And um, I just love when someone is so um, just humble like that. You yeah. Know? You can see it in her. Oh yeah, yeah. She still. I think it was in the Araxia interview where they were like, "We wanted to glam you up," mm -hmm. um, and she's like, "No, this is me. Just yeah. let me be. As you know, is. Yeah. as is." And she's just. She's different. Mm -hmm. She's made of a different cloth, and I think she's gonna. She's creating the paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. This is when things are starting to turn, right. and um, I'm so happy to be watching it happen with everything that's happened and I'm sure you're going to have a continued success and projects and and recognition for everything that you're doing. Um, you mentioned that you started uh, painting and drawing freshman year of high school and that's right around the age of 14. What advice, knowing what you know now, what advice would you give young RP if you could talk to her and say, you know, this is what I want you to know. Yeah, I, I would say don't be scared. Follow your passion and know that you're going to make it happen. You know, that's the thing, like fear stops us from doing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And I still get fearful to do a lot of things. Even when I'm posting, you know, something on Instagram, if it's something new I drew, it's being vulnerable. It's putting mm -hmm. yourself out there. And I do get negative um, comments, by the way. It's right. not all positive <laughs> and happy. Yeah, it, it's really putting yourself out there. But it doesn't matter. I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to get a few ne negative comments. That's, that's OK. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, if even people don't like the piece, 
if it inspires them to do their own thing, to follow their own passion, then that's enough, you know? And I, I say this all the time that when people are doing what they love, mm -hmm. they're happier. It's mm -hmm. just, it creates joy. Yeah. And the happier people we have in the world, the happier world we have. So imagine like um, Hitler didn't get accepted to art school. Did you know that? <laughs> Did you, did you know that? I did not. Okay, so no. imagine if he had, <laughs> right? You know, like, it's just this, it's not, and it's not all about art. It's not about all the visuals, visual art. But um, I would just tell myself, trust yourself. Yeah. Trust yourself, don't be fearful. Because there was a, a decade in my life, in my 30s, actually, mm -hmm. that I didn't believe in myself. I didn't think my art was good enough. I didn't think I could make anything with it. And I was a realtor oh, yeah, wow. for 10 years. I, mean, I love real estate. I, I actually loved the job. I loved the people I met. I loved homes. But this is my passion. Mm -hmm. But I didn't pursue it because I thought that I could just make more money that way and yeah. that I wasn't good enough. I really thought, you know, that that's why. But um, when it came, to, when you, I got to a point where it didn't matter. It didn't matter if I'm gonna make money. It didn't matter, because I can make money doing whatever, you know, I can get a job, I can mm -hmm. sell real estate, do whatever, I can make money. It wasn't about the money anymore, it, it was about the calling in my heart, that it's like craving a food that you can't have, you know, mm -hmm. every day of your life, you mm -hmm. know, I, I have to draw, I have to paint. Mm -hmm. And in, um, so what I would tell young Arpi is follow that craving. You know, mm -hmm. do it, do it, and do Don't it. Be scared, yeah. You gotta, it, it's a few things though. You have to practice it. You have to. You can't, okay, if you wanted to be a basketball player, you can go and get a master's degree and read books about how to shoot a basket, uh, a ball, but if you don't go out there and really throw a ball, do you know how to play basketball? Right. You know, you have to practice it. And once you practice it, give it, all you, and people say, well, I want to quit my day job and this is all mm -hmm. I want to do. Don't quit your day job mm -hmm. because financial stress will suck out your joy, <laughs> let me tell you. Right, right. Fine. If you love it enough, do it at night. Mm -hmm. Wake up earlier in the morning. Yeah. Squeeze it into your lunchtime. Right. Make it happen. Right. And then when you do get to a point where you figured it out and you can make some money from it, then quit your day job. Of Don't course. do it yet. There you, you know. go. But, um, Solid advice. And yeah. then share it. Yeah. Share your passion. And even if you don't have an audience, it doesn't matter. It's putting it out there in the world. And even if it's like your mom and your cousin following you on Instagram, you know, you're inspiring them. Mm -hmm. You're making them happy. So just share, share your passion. So this concludes our interview with RP Krikorian. Um, she's been a pleasure to speak to. Thank, Thank you, you for sharing everything and, and being so uh, um, honest and Thank you. I loved all, all your answers. Thank you so much.